Good afternoon. My name is Chris Inshaw with Shermco Industries, and today we're going to be doing a case study for a uh, expansion at a data center. Uh, this data center expansion it was a three megawatt uh, addition to an existing data center, and there were four 750 kW modules as part of this expansion, and each module had three battery cabinets. The distribution for the UPS system was served by a 3.75 MVA unit substation with uh, medium voltage normal and standby sources. The voltage fault current at the uh, 12.5 uh, kV source uh, was approximately the 12.5 uh, kA and 15.5 kA at 600 VDC. And the UPS uh, distribution bus serves 10 PDUs. So uh, this one line shows the uh, the new equipment that was being added. So we have the four modules here. Uh, it shows only one battery cabinet, but it's typical of three for each of those modules. And then there were eight new PDUs added uh, to being existing. So this uh, shows the uh, the existing medium voltage source from the utility coming in through their bus that goes out to the units, uh, uh, the uh, UPS substation. Uh, and we have the medium voltage standby source, which was had both an A and a B bus, uh, so they could have uh, switch generators between buses uh, as required uh, if one generator was out of service. So for this uh, project, we had uh, studies that we did. There was the short circuit and equipment evaluation. We did protect protective device coordination, and we did AC and DC arc flash. The AC and DC arc flash were based on the IEEE 1584 uh, 2018 and uh, NFPA 70E 2018 editions. The analysis also included the existing UPS distribution uh, and uh, its modules as well. So the, the model was created based on some middle data and, uh, of the, and an existing model of the system, as well as data provided by the client that data included feeder links, uh, manufacturer's cut sheets, uh, and uh, equipment specifications for that equipment that was being added. We included in the model the medium voltage distribution and standby sources with multiple configuration paths to allow for the different switching configurations that were uh, available at the uh, site. So this is the, uh, the model that we created in ETAP. And if we switch to the okay so in, in ETAF here is the uh, the media voltage uh, normal power source and we have the standby uh, generators with their A and B bus and switching and then these feed down to a transferable uh, unit substation and then the UPS distribution uh, with the battery modules that were included and we also have the PDUs that the system uh, uh, UPS system serves. So well, the first analysis we did was AC short circuit. Uh, there were switching configurations representing the normal and three standby power configurations. And we ran uh, all equipment was found to have a uh, acceptable interrupting rating. If we go back to the ETAP look, uh, we can run the duty analysis. And let's see here, we, we ended up with our fault currents that uh, uh, we had at each of the PD, uh, each of the UPS modules, as well as uh, the different PDU points. We also performed a protective device coordination analysis, and that ind analysis indicated a lack of selectivity between the utility relays and the site main relays for both phase and ground functions. Uh, it was also determined that most of the ground fault functions were effectively disabled as a result of high resistance grounding, uh, both at the generators and at the unit substations. In reviewing the coordination issues with the client, they determined they did not want to make changes at this time uh, because of the potential impact on operations. So if we look at the the TCC here, we can see that we have a miscoordination here for um, at, at phase. And if we toggle back to ETAP here, we can bring the TCC up 
And we can see that at this point here for phase, we had a 0.123 second time interval, uh, typically minimum uh, coordination time interval for uh, selective operations is between 0.2 and 0.3 seconds. And a lot of that depends on whether you have a break or failure scheme or uh, the types of relays involved. Uh, because these are both microprocessor based relays, we sometimes want to allow it to go down as low as 0.15 seconds, but that's crowding it pretty quickly. Uh, we also had the uh, in the phase of the ground curve, we show the miscoordination there as well. Again, the time interval is uh, less than we'd like to see uh, for selective operation in that. And in both of these curves, uh, there was sufficient time or, or available in settings, actually, to be able to move these and allow for selective operation. And we did make that recommendation in our report that they uh, allow for that in a future uh, outage time where they could uh, make those changes. Okay, we also, the next analysis we did was the arc flash, AC arc flash analysis. Um, and we were run based on the normal and standby power configuration with two generators on each bus. Uh, when we discussed the uh, operating scenarios with the client, uh, they uh, determined that the cases with all four generators on a bus is not something that they would operationally ever do. Uh, and that the transferable transferability between the uh, buses was strictly for a lot of, for uh, an outage of a generator. Initial analysis uh, indicated that uh, the incident energy at all locations was uh, less than 40 calories per centimeter square. So this is our uh, arc flash summary table that from ETAP, and then we generally take this data and export it to an Excel spreadsheet, which gives us a, a little cleaner look as far as the report. And we also use this to, for printing, uh, exporting and printing our labels as well. DC arc flash analysis became, uh, was a little more interesting. And this is where the, the, the bulk of our analysis or, or talk about this is gonna be is on the DC arc flash. Uh, the initial arc flash analysis was run based uh, using the maximum power method. Uh, and it was determined that we had incident energies of approximately 125 calories per centimeter squared. This was using a two second time limit as allowed uh, in the IEEE standard uh, and with a approximately 15.5 uh, kA bolted fault current at 600 VEC. The major reasons for the high incident energy were determined to be the battery cabinet, cabinet configuration uh, and the, uh, the disconnects within that breaker. Uh, it was just shown that the cabinet had to be opened to disconnect the battery and that there was no shielding on the line side of the lugs. Uh, the main breaker was not effectively isolated. As a result, in our analysis, we uh, our point of analysis at the battery uh, cabinet was on the line side of the main disconnects. It was initially found that the battery disconnect was also not the type the owner thought it was. Their original in-house uh, analysis thought that they had uh, incident energy of less than 10 calories. Uh, and uh, so they were uh, quite uh, upset by having a uh, 125 calorie determination in their analysis that we did. Um, so when we look at this cabinet, we can see that again, there's no way to operate the disconnect with the doors closed and that the, uh, the dis disconnect in the upper right corner here is not shielded. So uh, that's why we ended up with our analysis point on the line side of this uh, disconnect. So this is the device the client thought they had, uh, which has a fixed instantaneous uh, at three times and a plus or minus 20% tolerance. And at the arcing fault current under the max power method, you can see that this device would operate very quickly. What was actually installed was a different device that had a, an adjustable instantaneous that at the lower level had a plus, and plus 42 minus 20% tolerance. And again, the arcing fault current, when we plot it, it actually ended up with a uh, clearing time of in excess of 10 seconds, resulting in the high incident energy. So this is the, um, the analysis showing that we have um, 125 calories at the battery terminals. And you can see where we have our point of analysis on the line side of the battery disconnect breakers. In consulting with the client and engineer of record, 
uh, we determined that um, the maximum power method was possibly uh, either under or over conservative in two different areas. Uh, the first being that uh, the arcing fault current is assumed to be 50% of the bolted fault current. This may be high or low depending upon the point of analysis and the, and the uh, configuration, whether it's an arc in open air versus an arc in a cabinet. Um, and that the, it also assumes that there's a three times multiplier for an arc in a cabinet, which uh, is very conservative. The analysis is then rerun using the stocks uh, and open lander method uh, with substantially improved results due to a more accurate determination of the arcing fault current and the effect of an enclosure. So with the uh, Stokes and Oppenlander method, incident energy was reduced to 20, approximately 22 to 23 calories, which make it a work, made it a workable zone. If the battery disconnects were replaced with a type HLDC that the client thought was in their devices, uh, in their battery cabinets, the uh, breaker incident energy could be further reduced to less than 1.2 calories. This would not require a uh, 40 calorie fast suit, a flash suit to operate the disconnects. And as we see here, the uh, incident energy is less than one calorie. The recommendations that fell out of, besides making the coordination changes we'd recommended, uh, we also recommended changing all the existing battery disconnects from type LGDC to the type HL, HLDDC, which had the fixed instantaneous uh, at a lower level. Uh, and we also made recommendations to change specifications for all new equipment going forward. Those would require that the batteries uh, be able to be disconnected with all covers in place and also specify a battery with a low fixed instant, fixed instantaneous, such as the HLD DC breaker. So in conclusion, when we're looking at um, an analysis, we want to verify that uh, you, know, you have accurate information as far as the equipment design and components, uh, because those can have a significant impact on the analysis results. We also want to be aware of locations where the main device may be involved in, a, in the event due to a lack of isolation. And I also want to choose an analysis method that fits your application. So if the, say the max power method is overly conservative because the type of uh, configuration you have in your equipment, then using another method such as the Stokes and Oppenlander method uh, is a, a, a way to, to uh, do that. So I appreciate your time. Thank you.